So my name is Tom Sarkonic, and today we have a great forum panel to talk about the intersection of athletics and education. We have our own Sac State president, Dr. Robert Nelson, who really has, needs no introduction, but maybe a couple of little known facts. As the first in his family to attend college, Dr. Nelson served in various faculty and administration roles before being named president of the University of Texas Pan American, then signed on as Sac State's president in July 2015. He's a sports enthusiast who loves to support the university's athletic students and encourages all students to become lifelong learners and critical thinkers. He's especially excited about our football head coach, Troy Taylor. Troy is a local athlete who attended Cordova High School in Rancho Cordova, led his team to a 14-0 record, and was named Northern California Player of the Year. As quarterback at Cal, he was also the team's MVP from 1987 to 89 and was drafted by the Jets. He began his coaching career in 1994 and signed on with Sac State's Hornets head as Sac State's Hornets head coach in 2018, clinching a nine and four and nine and two records in 2019 and 2021 respectively. And today we also have a special guest moderator, Dr. Kristen Tudor, who's the special assistant to President Nelson. Kristen has a master's degree in public communication and a doctorate in educational leadership and policy studies. And with that, I will hand it over to Kristen to guide us through the fascinating topic of the intersection between education and athletics, especially football. So Kristen, take it away. Thank you, Tom. And thank you to the Renaissance Society for having all of us here today. I am looking forward to a great conversation over the next hour or so, uh, talking to President Nelson and Coach Taylor about the role of athletics in higher education. So gentlemen, let's jump right in with that big question. Um, President Nelson, I'll start with you. What do you see as the role of athletics programs in higher education, specifically here at Sac State? Well, in many ways, there's a metaphor that people use or analogy that uh, that sports is the front porch of the university. It's what everybody sees when they first come to the university. Uh, you're known for your sports. You're known for your football team. You're known for what's happening there. It's a way it, to introduce people and to bring them into the fold and part of it. But in a larger sense, it builds community. It builds a lasting sense of us being hornets. Uh, we don't call ourselves hornets because of hornets. We call ourselves hornets because of sports. And we're a hornet family because of sports. So it's integral in what we're trying to do. It's part of higher education. And we would not be a lasting, strong educational institution without sports. Coach Taylor, what do you think? Well, that's that's pretty complete answer. Um, you know, I would say that, yeah, you touched on it, um, the engagement of our alumni in community. Um, and then, uh, you know, the in respect to the student athlete experience, we feel like we're an extension for our for our student athletes from the classroom uh, to uh, for them, them an opportunity really to, um, you know, learn about things like teamwork and dedication and perseverance, all those things that um, are really important and they're talked about uh, in the classroom and, and amongst uh, people, but we kind of live it every day. Our guys have to deal with, with loss and frankly, uh, with success and, and learn how to do that. So uh, Phil, it's a unique uh, opportunity to teach our, our young people. And then uh, hopefully, you know, the vision really is that the community, whether or not you went to Sacramento State or not, that the community and our alumni uh, feel connected with us through our program and you know certainly being successful helps that but uh, doing things the right way and graduating players and all those things i think can kind of bind us and uh, all together i think sports yeah, I think... if ahead. i could just follow up i think sports uh, creates leaders it's part of their education they're actually being educated and they become leaders just like coach taylor became a leader and so many people and so many politicians and so many others it's part of the education here. They're student athletes. They're students first and foremost. So I hear you both kind of talking about this notion that athletics and academics are really intertwined, right? Do you want to elaborate a little bit more about that connection between athletics and academics? 
Yeah, yeah, I can, I can go. Um, you know, for me, I mean, the experience is, um, you know, all the things that, that I've learned really in my life from my, or from my parents, and then what I la- uh, learned in sports. I can, I can, uh, so when I'm teaching and interacting with our student athletes, I know it's kind of forged me to, to be in the person that I am. And so all the things that, that, uh, that I've learned is, like I said, per- perseverance and, you know, emphasis of being a part of something that's bigger than yourself. And frankly, that's hard at this age group. You know, it's uh, a lot of it is becomes about themselves. We were all at that, that age group. Um, and then when they come into a team there, uh, we emphasize that the team is bigger than the individual. And so that's something that you use, utilize for the rest of your life as a, a father and um, as a leader and employer and employee, all of those things. Um, I just strongly believe that there's not a better venue than uh, athletics to, to learn those things and really forge uh, leaders and uh, people of character that, that come out of our universities. We have over 500 student athletes here. 23 sports, okay? Only two or three of them are going to ever make it to the pros, but all 500 of them are going to graduate and they're going to get a degree and they're gonna contribute to society. They're gonna save our democracy. They are going to be there to make certain that we have new innovative careers. They are, the lifeblood of what we're trying to produce in students. So President Nelson, you've been in in higher education for a bit, Um, first as a a professor and and then moving into administration. Um, Have you always been such a staunch supporter of athletics programs? Uh, No, I have not been. Uh, I learned that the farther I got up in the administration, uh, I need to raise scholarships. I need to raise funds for scholarships for all of the students on the, on the uh, on our campus. Where do we do that? Often at the president's terrace when we have guests there. You can't believe how many scholarships we've raised up there as we've watched a football game or watched a basketball game. It gives you a chance to socialize with donors, and it became important. It also I became much more involved when I realized. I wanted our athletes to be successful. I wanted their GPAs to be successful. And so I wanted to make sure that I was there, that I got to know them and the like. And eventually you fall in love Uh, and you fall in love with the sport, but you fall in love with the players as well and everything that they represent. And so Now, last night, we were at the women's basketball. As soon as this is over, we're going to go to uh, the baseball. Today's the first day of baseball. Uh, One of our players has already hit a home run. Uh, And so we're excited about what these young men will be doing today. So do you either of you see a difference between, say, like a Sac State type program um, and the way that it impacts the, the culture and the community here and the, and the academics versus like a UCLA or a Cal type of program. Are there differences in, in the role that athletics plays for those two types of, of universities? I mean, the, the, the elements that we talked about are, are the same. Um, obviously, at, those, at the FBS level, there's a, a huge, they're a huge revenue producer. Um, which, which in companies in extreme uh, budget pressure and uh, which not always brings out the best in, in uh, people and in organizations. So with that pressure, sometimes, um, you know, coaches, if they don't win, they're going to, they're going to lose their jobs. I mean, it's just a fact. Um, so, you know, sometimes that spurs things that happen that aren't uh, as productive for student athletes as they, they could be. And I'm not saying our level is completely innocent of that, but, um, I think we have a, a healthy relationship between, you know, academics and graduation and success on the field. And um, yeah, so that's, that's what I would say, but the football, you know, is still great. We, we beat FBS teams in this, in this level all the time. And I think it's just important to the communities uh, in our area that uh, as the FBS level. Would you, um, for those people who might not know, would you tell us what FBS is and how that's distinct from our, yeah. um, yep. 
All right. So it used to be Division One and Division One uh, AA, and so we we are FCS football championship series, which means we have a um, sixty three scholarships. The FBS level football bowl subdivision, they have the college football playoffs. They have eighty five scholarships and uh, a pretty pretty big budget. So um, those are those are kind of the, the distinct differences between the two. Okay. I think there's a couple of other differences. I don't think our students are necessarily thinking they're going into uh, the NFL. Uh, they, they know that they're here and they're playing at our level and that. Uh, and so they're more interested in their careers and, and in their schoolwork. Um, if you just look at the overall GPA of 3.14 for our uh, student athletes, that's higher than our, the rest of our students on our campus. Uh, it shows you that they're disciplined and working hard. The other thing is, I think there's a sense of um, belonging and family. Last night at the women's basketball game, the entire football team was there. They were loud. They were smacking the feet. <laughs> they were clapping. They were, they were having a great time. I felt bad for the other team whenever they went up for free throws because they were just giving them a really rough time. And the, men's soccer team was there as well. And so was the volleyball team. So all of these people are coming together. They feel part of being a Hornet and, and that. And I think that's different at our level because if you're at a Cal or you're at an Oklahoma, you're thinking football, football, football all the time. And our, our kids are enjoying themselves and enjoying each other. Well, and speaking of football and enjoying ourselves, um, I assume uh, most folks in our audience are aware that Sac State's football team won its second consecutive Big Sky Championship this year. So congratulations, Coach Taylor. Um, Coach Taylor, what has the success of football to you? What's it meant to Sac State, to your players? You know, um, one, it's great to see when people achieve things through hard work and they see success. It's really a uh, it's really a special moment. You just kind of feel that they're going to be able to do those things and, and call within their, themselves in the future uh, that they, they always know they can, can accomplish those things. Um, within the community and alumni, it's been exciting. There's so many people that are excited. Um, we've been able to engage our alumni, not just uh, you know former football players, but uh, Hornets everywhere. And then just feeling the community love and support uh, when we go in and recruit high schools and uh, how excited um, they, you know, the people that are working there are about Sacramento state football. So that's been fun. You know, it was always the vision to be the pride of Sacramento, you know, uh, it's something that people can rally behind. And so um, I think we've taken a, a big step in that. And it's not just winning championships, you know, it's also being successful in the classroom and We've had three semesters of over 3.0 GPAs, and two of the highest semesters in the history of the football program. We just uh, recently, actually today, found out about our APR ranking, which is a 990 um, out of 1,000. That's the academic progress rate is the, what your students, the high score you can get is 1,000, you know, just to give you a, um, a point of departure. Stanford, you know, some, is like 995. So, um, we're, that's 990 is an unbelievably high number, and we're really, really proud of that. How does that happen? Well, I think we're bringing in good student athletes. It's important, the, the, the academic part. We have a great academic support system. Our coaches are very involved in the um, academic uh, progress of our players, checking classes, making sure they're doing their work, um, and sometimes giving them consequences when they're not doing the right thing. So uh, when you see a score like that, uh, a 990, um, something we're, we're just as proud about that as, you know, our, our championships. I remember the first time I went in the huddle with the coach and all of the uh, players put their arms in together and put their hands on top of each other. And coach yelled, what are we here for? And I expected him to say, beat the hell out of Davis. Okay. And instead, he said, to graduate. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah, we, we and, bring that up a lot. And, you know, um, um, our players know that that's that's the purpose, because at the end of the day, if we we can win uh, Big Sky championships, even a national championship. But if we're not if our players aren't graduating, we're, we're all failing them. And so um, it's just going to affect their family. 
of generations. Many times our players are the first generation to graduate from college. That's, that's really powerful stuff because um, there's a very good chance now that their children will graduate from college and give them better opportunities. So our guys know, you know, none of our goals talk about winning. Um, the goal, and I tell every kid that comes into my office, and the first goal is going to be for them to graduate. The second goal is for, going to be for them to have a great experience, both on the field, on the, uh, on the campus, um, to enjoy it. Now, part of a good experience is their interaction with their coaches, their teammates. Part of, the, part of the, um, the factor in that is winning. It's no fun to lose. Um, and then the third goal is for them to maximize their potential, both uh, in the classroom and, and on the football field. And uh, we don't talk about winning. I don't think talking about winning and making it a goal makes it happen. I never believe that. I think just the day-to-day -day activities, winning the day, uh, the great interaction, working really hard, and then those other things kind of kind of pay off. But, uh, you know, it's, that's what it's all about when guys graduate. We had 19 players that had graduated as seniors before they even played this season. So it's pretty powerful stuff. You know, the goal is to graduate every single one of our student athletes. Obviously, we're going to fail in that. It's just not going to happen. But um, we can, if we can come as close as possible to that 100% mark, then we're going to uh, be doing some powerful stuff. I'll give you an update on the baseball score. It's 6-3 in the third inning. Sac State's up. Okay. Thanks. Um, Thanks. The other thing I remember about Coach Taylor uh, when he first came uh, and he was talking to the players, he uh, said, you can lead through fear or you can lead through love. And we choose love. You want to talk about that, coach? Absolutely. You know, I, um, we believe that there's two huge, uh, powerful forces in the world, fear and love. And they're both really powerful. We all know fear works and what it does. And there are programs that are definitely uh, led by fear and they're, they're successful in some aspects, um, but there's nothing more powerful than love. When you really love something, you'll do almost anything for it. Um, and then the people that argue with me that say, well, love's powerful, but fear is, is more powerful. I'll say that, that anybody that has a child uh, would run into a burning building to save them. So uh, that shows you right there that love is much more powerful than fear. So um, we don't use manipulation here. It does work. Um, we're trying to motivate them through inspiration and through love. And, and consequently, we recruit people that love football, love being a teammate, love each other. Um, and I think when those things happen and you have those um, kind of a, as the, the, the platform of your organization, I think you can accomplish a great thing. So our, our guys know that doesn't mean, you know, love doesn't mean it's all rainbows and puppy dogs. You know, sometimes it means they get CT where they're, uh, we have CT um, Friday evenings from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. that a coach, a full-time coach uh, runs. If you haven't been doing the right thing, you haven't been going to class, haven't been early, all those things, we're not going to yell at you. We'll give you a little consequence, um, but that comes out of love. And it's really, if you think of a great team, a great organization, it's no different than a great family. Um, you know they love you and accept you. That doesn't necessarily mean they accept your behavior all the time. And they'll be the one that tells you the straight truth and say, hey, you're not doing the right thing. I've had many conversations with our, our uh, players on the, on the couch here saying, what are you doing? Why are you here? You're not doing the right things in the classroom. You're not doing the right things on the field. Why are you here? And, and you know, kind of putting it on them and then holding them accountable. Um, but it all comes from a place of love, just like a good parent wouldn't let you come home at 2 a.m. In the, in the middle of the week. Um, it's, it's holding them accountable but leading with love that you really care about them as people um, and as uh, students and as football players, the whole encompasses all of it. President Nelson, since you came to Sac State in 2015, um, our football program has come a long way. Um, it's a different program than it was. What do you think are the biggest factors that have led to this change? Well, it's the man in the white hat, okay. <laughs> Getting a coach in here and, and his team of coaches, uh, that's, that's made a tremendous difference. Um, but we've done other things as well, whether it's putting the uh, new turf down this year because we didn't have nearly as many injuries. When coach came here, we were having a lot of lower body injuries because the turf wasn't in shape. We hadn't taken care of it. 
in the right way. That made a big difference. Um, making homecoming into a bigger deal so that we have more and more students coming out and, and getting the students here uh, and getting the community involved. We have 270,000 uh, alumni around here. Uh, getting them to the games has, has made a difference because cheering, you know, it helps. It really does. The fan, you know, they, they call it 12th man for a reason. So um, there's a lot of that. And then I think it is uh, that we have improved the academics so much. Uh, when I came, we'd just been on probation. Uh, our grades were not good. Uh, and the students that uh, the coaches are recruiting are smart kids, kids that really do do the work in the classroom and care about it. Strength and conditioning has changed. Uh, one of the first things that the coach did when he came in was say, I want to change the way we're doing this strength and conditioning. I want this person to help me. I need to do this and the like. Uh, and then uh, having Mark Orr as our athletic director, uh, someone who has had success at St. Mary's, had success here in Christian Brothers, uh, someone who loves Sacramento and wanted to come back and build on the traditions here and build re real traditions. So all of those things I think have helped. Yeah, it's been, I, I've been on this campus 20 years and uh, it's really just all of those things really show, not just through football awards, but through the whole Hornet spirit that, that we have now on campus. Coach Taylor, you've coached at other institutions. Um, you have a, a long and successful coaching career. Is there something you can tell us about the Sac State team, this current crew of players that you have uh, something that makes them special or unique? Yeah, I would say, you know, we're, we're looking for certain types of athletes. And when we came here, there were a lot of them uh, that were already here. Um, we're, we're looking for high character guys. We have a ton of high character players here, highly competitive and love football. Um, and then it's about, uh, you know, mentoring them and, and leading them. And what I have found is, is young people will follow you if you care about them and you have a good plan. And our guys from the very beginning, since we arrived here, completely embraced our staff um, and our philosophy. Um, I will talk a little bit about the success that we've had. And I'm not just saying it because President Nelson is here. Um, the only way you can be successful at a university in football is if you have a president that it's important to them. And uh, you can talk to any head coach in the United States, and that's the first thing they'll, they will say. If the president doesn't doesn't care or is apathetic about it, then you're probably going to have a pretty mediocre football program, no matter how good your, your coach is, or even uh, somewhat your facilities. So um, it really starts with him when things, when I need to be able to retain coaches and be able to improve the experience for our student athletes. Um, it's president Nelson is the guy that's deciding those things. And I can tell you from experience, he says no to very little things when it comes to the student athlete. And that's the biggest reason that uh, we're successful and then closely followed with Mark Orr, who is um, kind of the branch between Co uh, President Nelson and myself that um, is got to be the greatest AD to work for in the country. Um, he just really cares about his coaches. He doesn't overreact to things. He uh, understands what it takes. And so when you have that level of support and competency above you, you got a, you got a chance to be successful. It doesn't mean you're going to be, but you at least have a chance. So that's what's really unique to Sacramento State is having those uh, two things in place. Um, as long as we have those two things in place, we'll, we'll probably be pretty good in football, I think. But we've got to get you better facilities. We've got to get a broad point two, a bigger weight room. Uh, you don't even have a room yet for uh, the whole team to be able to meet in. We need to build that. Uh, so anyone who's listening out there that's willing to help us get that broad Point two, build that bigger weight room. We need your help. <laughs> um, so I want to switch gears a little bit and, and talk about a, a recent controversy that was local um, at UC Davis. So a group of students uh, recently started a petition and were protesting the university's mandatory uh, athletic fee. Uh, now, their athletic fee is much higher than ours. I think theirs is maybe double um, what ours is at Sac State, but that is something that 
we have here as well. So what would you say, and we'll start with you, President Nelson, what would you say to a student who says they shouldn't have to pay an athletic fee? Well, the first thing I'd ask them is, did you get a scholarship? And uh, most of our students are going to say, yeah, I got a scholarship. Okay. Well, that probably was helped through athletics. It probably was, as I said earlier, in a conversation about athletics or at a game or something like that. The alumni and the people who are giving need to think about the university and athletics makes them think about the university. Second is, uh, do you feel like a Hornet? Are you part of the Hornet family? Well, we wouldn't have the Hornet family without athletics. And you need to be part of that, that community that exists there. And then the third thing, and probably the most important thing is, you're going to have a diploma from Sac State. How are people out in the community going to know about Sac State? They're going to know because of Troy Taylor, because of Asher O'Hara, because of all of our players uh, and, and what they've done. OK, uh, and so it builds the reputation of the university and builds the stature of your degree. Um, if you come from UCLA, everybody knows about the Bruins, right? If you come from Cal, they know about the Bears. It's no different coming from here. And so having that team builds it. And finally, go to a game, OK? You're here to socialize. Education is not all about the mind and what you learn. It isn't all about the classroom. Going to a game, participating there, being part of a larger community. That's why we live on a campus. That's why we go to, to college. It isn't uh, just online. That's why right now we're so excited to have all the students back on campus because they're learning together and they're growing together. Coach Taylor, you want to add anything? You know, that, I, I can't improve, improve upon that answer. That was perfect. Excellent. So another um, issue in college athletics is the, the issue of whether or not student athletes can use their, their name, their image, their likeness for profit. Last year, um, several, after several states, including California, enacted laws that said, you know what? Collegiate athletes should be allowed to be compensated for the use of their name, image, and likeness. So then um, the NCAA adopted a policy, the National Collegiate Athletics Association adopted a policy that essentially lifted those so-called pay-to-play restrictions. So we'll start with you, Coach Taylor. How do you see now and how do you predict that this new policy is going to affect Sac State athletes and, and maybe even collegiate athletics in general? Well, I, don't, I haven't felt it yet at, at our level. And that's one of the things that I like most about it is, um, you know, outside of a, a few athletes that have been able to generate some, some income, it's pretty unique at this level. And I think it's kind of unique to only a few people <laughs> at the FBF oh, well, as well. So um, I know it's becoming almost uh, at the FBS level. It's almost, there's almost a sector that's almost pretty much is professional sport. So um, hasn't affected us really to this to this moment. I hope it doesn't. I'm all for student athletes, um, you know, getting more and, and helping their experience better and all those things. Um, but it's a it's definitely a slippery slope. There's been a ton of changes in college football over the last few years with the transfer port on all those things. What I really try and do is just fo focus on creating the best possible culture I can here. Um, we've had very few players that have gone into the transfer portal. I think one scholarship player this year, and that's it. Um, and so what best thing we can do is treat our players really well, make it a great experience for them. And, you know, if they're interested in, in name, image, and likeness and all that, and then, you know, that's, they can certainly look into it and we're not going to block that. We cannot block it, uh, but we can just focus on their experience. Yeah. What do you think about it, President Nelson, these changes? There will be a few athletes that will be able to profit on their images and, and, and who they are. They're not going to be a lot, um, and it will be in very few sports. I do worry that it will be too much in a male sports and create disparities there. But if you look at 
Fresno right now, uh, two of the basketball players, women's basketball team, are two of the most popular in the United States. But it's because of TikTok and, and, and things like that. And that's where they're, they're really going to profit. We just have to make sure that they're safe. We got to make sure that, that no betting taking place, that there's no under the table payments. We've always watched at this uh, and always watched to make sure that uh, everything is clean. We'll watch even closer now, but I don't think it, people said it would be the downfall of sports. No, we have student athletes and they're here to get a degree. It will be interesting to see how this plays out over the next couple of years. Um, I, I had a question uh, that uh, someone had submitted earlier about the perception that some people have that student athletes are treated differently um, that they get preferential treatment, particularly star players may get this, that they get access to tutors, that they might even have lower expectations um, for their academic performance. Um, Coach Taylor, you think that's an accurate perception? Well, I mean, it depends on probably where you're at and what campus you're on. I can I can tell you that, you know, our players, uh, we're, we hold them to probably higher standards than what other student athletes or students are expected. Uh, and that's how they behave. Um, on and off the field, in the classroom, all of those things. It's very challenging to be a, in a competitive Division I sport and be a full-time student. And I'm very proud of what, what our players have accomplished. Like I talked about the GPA and graduation rate. Um, you know, we, we are not a program that, uh, that really attracts uh, entitled athletes. They kind of feel like they're entitled to more. And um, I think like attracts like. So we talk about being humble and being hungry uh, to prove yourself. And we've attracted those type of type of things. And if we, we sense that our players are feeling like they de deserve some sort of preferential treatment, we'll be sure to make sure that they realize that um, one of the tenets of our program is to treat everybody with dignity and respect, not just people that can help you, but treat everybody. So, um, and that starts with how you, um, as, as the leaders from the very top, and our coaches do a great job of um, leading by example. And not there's not I'm not more important than anybody else. This program will go long after I'm gone. Um, it's bigger than me. And it's bigger than any in any individual player, uh, because that's a, a tenant of our program. Um, I think uh, we attract uh, players are like that. Now I know it's there are some across the country that probably do get preferential treatments. Um, but that's not happening here, other than the fact that we want to give them the absolute best care and health. We do have a great tutorial program uh, that helps athletes, uh, mentors in when they come in. Many of our, our students, um, like I said, haven't had parents that went to college. And so they're learning habits. Um, but that's how you change the world is, is one person at a time. So um, we do give them uh, benefits in terms of uh, their, their uh, you know, tutoring and all those things. We do hold them accountable as, as coaches, but it's all done so that they can be successful you know, in the classroom, but they still have to earn it on their own. Tutoring, I think, is especially important. Remember, these students are on the road. They miss classes because they're on the road. They need help to be able to make up that work and make sure that they are staying on equal with their other students. Kristen, you were a, a professor here for 17 plus years. I don't think you ever gave a special favor to an athlete. You expected them to work just as hard. So I'll turn the question around to you. How did you treat the athletes in your classes? You know, it's, it, I was thinking about this question and two things came to mind. First, Coach Taylor, you were saying, you know, you teach your, your athletes that not to expect special treatment that they are. And I just really have had that experience with athletes in my classes that they come in, they work really hard to stay up on the work that they miss when they travel and they don't expect special treatment at all. I also was thinking about the idea that we also have so many programs on this campus for people in general, not just for athletes, tutoring program, peer tutoring, extra tutoring, and that we really do, at least on this campus, a great job of, of reaching out to all students to provide them um, those resources. Um, so, um, Coach Taylor, what, one of the questions I was given ahead of time, uh, we have the question of you to share 
one of your most memorable moments as a player and maybe a great memorable moment um, from your time as a coach? Yeah, I would say as a, as a player, um, you know, my first start at, at Cal when, when I uh, had my first game. So I remember that moment, but, you know, in, in general, and I get this that questions quite a few times for me, it's really, uh, we talk about being mindful. I mean, I really enjoy all aspects of my job, you know, some more than <laughs> some more than others, but for the most part, I really can't believe I get paid to be a coach here. And I tell that to my coaches all the time. I mean, I'm doing from about the age of seven, I knew I wanted to play football and I wanted to coach football and um, to be able to make a living doing what I do, coaching student athletes, watching them graduate, watching them have success and growing young men. I mean, it's, it's all good for me. Um, winning championships is great. It's a great feeling to see so many happy people in the crowd and across the campus in our locker room when they, they see that they've accomplished something and that they really could do it and all the work that they put into it paid off. Um, those are really special moments. But honestly, just having players graduate um, are, are just as rewarding. Um, and so it's it's all those moments that, uh, all those little moments really that, that make it a, a great experience. I'm not one of those coaches that you know, hopefully you look at and you're like, wow, that guy looks miserable. You know, I'm, I'm having a really good time. I've had fun doing this. Um, you know, I have more fun winning, but um, in general, I just really enjoy my job. And so um, it all goes back to love. You know, I do this because I love it. I was a high school coach for 14 years. I got paid $2,500 a year as a stipend um, to be a coach. My teaching salary is what, what um, you know, kind of paid the bills. So um, when I recruit guys, I tell you, you can tell I love football because I basically did it for free. And I did the same job at Folsom High School that I'm doing here. I just have more support. So um, I'd say 99% of the moments I have here are memorable moments. Um, there's very little of my job that I don't like. So in a couple of minutes, I'm going to switch over to our, the audience questions that are coming in. But before I do that, I wanna give you each an opportunity to share with us um, your vision of the future for athletics and for football specifically at Sacramento State. Um, what's your vision and what role do you see yourself playing in, in making that vision a reality? Um, President Nelson, I'll start with you. I'm gonna get out of the way. <laughs> let, him, let him go for it, okay? <laughs> that's, I think that's my role. Um, I'm here to support, to help raise funds, I really do want to see us to have better practice facilities. Our students uh, deserve that. Um, during COVID, uh, they weren't even allowed in the weight room and they had to do it outside. Um, we, we need something better for them so that they're prepared to, to be on the field and, and the like. Uh, I'm really excited about the Football stadium, stadium this year, uh, we'll finally have a press box that is not uh, rotting wood uh, and people will be able to get in there and, and see from there. Uh, we've got a new contract with ESPN Plus and we've got local uh, television here. Uh, I want more and more people to attend. I want to fill that stadium every chance we can. Um, and I'm looking for... Uh, people to feel ownership in the Hornets as being part of the Hornets and being part of the Hornet family. Um, we didn't win in the playoffs this year. I hope we do next year. Okay. And I hope we go on and, and just continue on that. But more than anything that my vision is watching those students walk across the um, platform They've always got stoles on them that say student athlete. That's the good. That's what I like. That's what I want to see. Coach Taylor, what's your vision for the future? Well, you know, my vision really hasn't changed uh, since, you know, when I took the job and I can read it to you um, and our players, um, I read it to every group that comes in and it's uh, everything we do. This is our vision and visions, you know, don't necessarily accomplish. It's what you project 
to, to be, to look like. So everything we do reflects our love of our program, competition, football, and each other. Our players graduate and leave our program with the confidence and skills to become productive members of our community. Our style of play is innovative, fun, and entertaining. People love to watch us play. We are the pride of Sacramento. And so that, that hasn't changed. That's the vision for the future. Um, you know, I'm not a big goal person and people think that's crazy. I don't think talking about goals and having goals make them to be accomplished. I, I, talk, I talk to our guys about winning the day, uh, engaging in the day, being successful in that day. And then those other things, they come, the, the success has come. But if you become really focused on what you're doing day to day, and that's what we're doing as a coaching staff, but that is our vision. That is if we could peer out in the future and create the perfect uh, scenario, um, that's what it looks like. That's great. I'm going to take the questions that the audience are sending in. For those of you out there, um, you can send your questions in through the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And I'm going to start with this fun one um, because I know President Nelson can answer this. Um, the question is, why, why is the team the Hornets? What's the history of that? Oh, there's a history behind how we became the Hornets. So when uh, Sac State was uh, a hot field, okay, and uh, in 1947 when they came over here, or it may have been a, the year after because they didn't, they were at Sac City for uh, a while, but they came uh, to the campus and uh, one of the pickup trucks got stuck. And so a bunch of the men push the pickup truck out. And you know how when you get out of mud, you start going fast. Well, they ran into a tree. The tree was filled with hornets and hornets came out of the tree. And that's how we became hornets, okay? They say in the piece I read that over 40,000 hornets came out of that tree that day. So I think that's a sign that we're supposed to grow to 40,000 students here and live out that, that history. Well, that's a great entrance to the next couple of questions. Um, we have folks who want to know, um, you, you mentioned, uh, President Nelson, the number of 500 student athletes. Um, and the question of, um, is that number growing? Will that continue to go up? No, that we're at 23 sports. We're not adding any sports at this point. Uh, and there, it's very important that we have gender equity, Title IX. And so if we grew in more uh, uh, with more sports in, in men's sports, we'd have to add in women's. Our 23 sports is much more than most uh, uh, other universities have. It's important to us to have vol uh, beach volleyball. It's important for us to have women's rowing uh, and all of the other sports so that we have a balance. And I think we've got a balance now. So it'll stay about the same as it is now. What about athletics budgets? Um, I have someone who wants to know, uh, are they going up? Are they going down? And, and what are the factors that shape that? The budget needs to be increased, um, but we're not going to increase it on the back of some of our students right now. Um, we need to do it through um, donations, uh, through working with corporate sponsors, through television revenue and other revenue. Uh, we run on a small budget in comparison to uh, San Diego State would be an example. Okay, they're in the CSU like we are, but their budget is, is closer to 60 million. Our budget's just about 23, 20 million. So it's not even in the same ballpark as there. Um, we have to be frugal. We are frugal. We have to re, uh, really rely on uh, donors to be able to grow the budget. So um, the next question is for Coach Taylor. The question is about the difference um, between coaching in high school versus the university. They said, you know, you were really successful at Folsom High School before you came here. Um, do you find the task the same? Uh, are the athletes the same or different? Yeah, they, there's a bit of uh, the range of, uh, athletic ability is larger at the, at the high school level. So, you know, you'll have a, you know, a guy like Jake Brownie who played quarterback at Folsom. who's was just actually on the campus. It's playing with the Bengals. It was an incredibly hardworking, talented guy. And then you'll have some, 
some kids that play on the team that, you know, can barely catch the ball and you, you try to make them have them all have play a part in their team. That doesn't necessarily mean starting, but have an impact on the team. Um, in, in terms of coaching, I think that I really learned how to coach when I left college coaching and became a high school coach um, and learning how to develop athletes, how to reach them. Um, and I use the same principles here at Sacramento State as I did at Folsom in terms of understanding human beings, what motivates them, how to treat them, how to interact with them. Those things don't change. Just the players are a little bit bigger and a little bit faster. Um, but uh, we still, one of the things at Folsom is we just always try to improve and get better as coaches, and consequently at players. And those are the same elements. So no, there's, to me, there's really no difference between the two. So we have someone um, who brings up the issue of um, the evidence about the potential of, of life, lifelong injury, brain injury to football players. Um, and, you know, wanting to know, you know, how do you respond to critics who say the sport of football should be outlawed? Yeah. So, you know, we, the, the health and welfare of the players is the most important. It is a game that involves, you know, uh, physical contact. And those are, those are scary things. Um, what we do as coaches as we limit the amount of the amount of contact, we do not tackle in practice. We do very little hitting. Uh, we're staying up where we don't lead with our head. We educate our players on all those things. And we are not an old school team that is going to go out and pound our players in any way. In fact, our players know that we don't waste their time with trying to make them tough. We, I just don't think it works that way. So um, we, we make sure they have the best equipment. Are there some inherent dangers and, in, playing football, there's inherent dangers in, in being a cheerleader and being thrown up in the sky and all those things. So we understand that there, there are some risks, but I really feel like I, when we started this whole thing off that, um, you know, if I didn't have sports and specifically football, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know what I'd be doing. So um, I think the positives way outrisk the negative. Certainly we don't want anybody getting injured, but there's so much to learn being a, a student athlete. And uh, of course, my expertise is in football. And I feel there's a, a lot of things that are lifelong lessons, and um, but our emphasis uh, is on keeping our guys healthy. Every year, we are very careful to update our concussion protocol. And we just finished an audit of our training and our physicians to make sure that our students were getting the very best care that they could possibly do get and that they were taken care of. In that way, we watch uh, and follow the concussion protocol. We watch and follow any injuries. Uh, we're never going to put an athlete out there who is hurt. Okay, that's not what Sac State is about. So I've got a question about the basketball uh, arena, or the I should say the potential. <laughs> um, are there plans? for a new basketball arena? And if, if we were to go that direction, how would we fund it? <laughs> That's where we've got to raise really big bucks, okay? Um, there are plans. Uh, and we started the Power of Thousand Hornets where we're asking people to donate towards the basketball arena. We have two options, really. We have the option of building an arena over by the sign on Highway 50 and, and really having something there that uh, would be a big arena that could be used for multiple functions and that, that would cost about $149 million and we would have to raise that money. You cannot use state money or general revenue funds or anything like that. You've got to raise the money. It would take uh, corporate sponsorships as well. The other option we have is to do and blow out the old gym and build it out to about 3,500 seats in there. We need something bigger. The nest is not big enough and it's not adequate. So we will keep working to have a, a facility. Um, it's gonna take a while. So Coach Taylor, I have a, a more of a comment. Um, in the question area that I'm going to share with you, because they said, you know, you're doing great things here, obvious success based on, you know, your work and, and your team's work, 
your co fellow coaches and and they say they heard that you may be uh, have been recruited by other teams by other programs and they just want to say um we hope you're staying at CSUS so I just thought I'd throw that out there um, good to be here and I um, no intention of being anywhere else excellent to hear but they did say you know they don't want you to necessarily divulge your future for that's good to hear that you have no <laughs> other plan um I have a question about female athletes here for President Nelson. Um, what do you think are the, the unique challenges that our female athletes uh, might face? I don't know if they have challenges that are different from the male athletes. Yeah. Uh, our female athletes, the, the women's basketball team, uh, for instance, has not had a winning season in uh, seven years, this will be their first winning season. They, yeah. We got them an excellent coach. He's new, he's exciting, Coach Campbell. And it's very much like what uh, Coach Taylor is doing. He's bringing that whole team up and being successful in that. Uh, our volleyball team has traditionally been very good. Our softball team went to the uh, NCAA just two years ago. Um, so they are as good as the men are. So they're strong. Uh, we probably need better facilities for them. Um, and that's why we built the, the there. Uh, the gymnasts are going to be tonight uh, on Folsom Avenue. We were building a new gym for them right next to where we're going to have a child care center. In the past, they've had to go all the way out to El Grove all the time. We're now building that facility so that they can practice here locally. Uh, and that, the same thing with the, the beach volleyball. So getting them better facilities is probably what we need to concentrate on. I know the um, the beach volleyball courts opened up um, during, the, during the shutdown, during COVID. Um, so before I, this, I didn't know that we had beach volleyball. So did we get those courts in and then that's when we started a team or did we have a team already? We already had a team, but they were playing up in Roseville. And so okay. they had to go up there. They had to practice up there. They had to do everything. That's why we took, um, for people who don't know, we've got the, uh, the tennis courts. We took out four tennis courts that were really cracked and, and you couldn't play on them. Uh, and took them out and put uh, sand in there. And uh, it's exciting to watch them play. It is. All right, well, we're almost out of time. Um, I'm gonna give you this last question and, and we sort of started here. So I think it's appropriate to kind of come back around and, and reflect. Um, someone has said, you know, it's, you've really been making waves in the conference by, you know, winning the football championship. Um, how do you see that progress reflected here, both on campus in the community, um, and then directly in the stadium. Is that for me or? Uh, uh, why don't you start, Coach Taylor? Okay, that's a big, that's a big question. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, our, uh, uh, the attendance, I, I think, has been really good. I think we're third in attendance across the conference. Um, so I've seen, definitely seen, you know, with the whole COVID thing, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully that gets lifted and we get it under control and we'll really get a good, gauge on next season but the attendance has been good we have spirited fans um, the overall feeling uh, I can tell you recruiting when we go out to high schools um, we've gotten most of the guys that we have wanted in the Sacramento area um, so that's good we're, we're winning the local battles in terms of kids want to come and play here um, great feedback from our alumni we have guys uh, guys and gals that have really donated money to uh, our student athletes, for instance, this year, uh, we wanted to feed our players more during the season. And so our alumni, we had them uh, pay for uh, two meals for the entire week uh, of, of, this, of the season. So I think it was Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, they paid for that. So you've seen people get excited about it. And again, we, we put almost everything we, we get uh, into our student athletes. So um, that's been exciting. We had a football camp on, on uh, campus. It's the largest one on the West Coast. Over 2,000 high school athletes came from around California and surrounding areas um, and were able to, to raise uh, a lot of money. And all every dollar of it went 
to uh, feeding our, our football players um, during the season and, and off season. That's a big deal because um, their scholarship check only goes so far, right? They got to pay expensive rents and all those things. So anything that we can help them. Um, and, and that became uh, uh, all those funds, uh, a big result is that the people being excited about our football program and obviously just good people that want to help out. So um, we have seen definite improvements and excitement um, in, in, in our football program and, and in general, um, I think President Nelson's done an unbelievable job of spotlighting this university and making it an attractive place to be. Um, it, it's less of a commuter school with the, the dorms that are being built on campus. All those things make a huge difference. So Sac State's an exciting place to be, I think, as a, as a student and a student athlete. And uh, we're just going to continue to work hard and enjoy what we're doing and, and build on the momentum that we have and, and get every get better next year. Wonderful. President Nelson. We're the only football school in this town. We own this town. And we're going to continue to own this town. We're going to continue to beat Davis. And we're going to get more and more fans in the stands. OK, uh, because that helps us with our identity of who we are and what we're trying to do. I want us to be successful. I trust this coach tremendously. I'm not worried about being on probation again. I'm not worried about any of those uh, problems. We're going to run a clean program, a program that everybody is proud of and a place where everybody wants to come and be part of it. Well, thank you, gentlemen. This was a really fun discussion. And, and I can close it in saying this, someone who's been on this a campus for a couple of decades, it, both of your work has um, made a big difference in, in the, the spirit, the feeling on this campus. So thank you for that. And thank you to the Renaissance Society, Society for having us today. I am gonna go ahead and hand it back over to Tom. Well, I want to thank all three of you for fascinating insights to uh, the realm of sports and education at Sac State. This has been fantastic. We appreciate everything you're doing and everything you've done to make our forum today a, a great, a great event and a great experience. Um, in um, as a token of our appreciation for what you've done, uh, we are going to uh, provide you with honorary memberships to the Renaissance Society for a year. And also we have made a mon monetary donation to the Seth Nelson Student Emergency Fund. So thank you again for all of what you do. Today's presentation, as I mentioned, is recorded and it will be archived and you can view it again in the future in two separate ways. One is the Renaissance Society forum channel on YouTube or just going to the Renaissance Society website and you can access it there. Next week's forum on the 25th will be Chris Lango with Landmark Battles for Fair Housing from 1948 to 68. Chris has done a video production and uh, volunteer work at the Center for Sacramento History, producing and narrating a variety of projects each February in Black History Month Chris, present, uh, Chris provides a presentation to examine the landmark legal battles in the 20 year fight for fair housing in Sacramento from 1948 to 68, prohibiting discrimination based on race, religion, national origin, or sex. These early civil rights cases impacted the nation and were argued by Nathaniel Colley, the first, American, um, first African American attorney in Sacramento to open up a law practice. Chris's archival journey next week will largely be told through Nathaniel Colley's voice. So thank you all for coming. It's been a fantastic one hour vi um, vision through education and athletics, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you next week again. Thank you.